can you get a slide guitar sound without using a slide? Let's see, shall we? Hello again everybody, it's Mel from Stocksbridge Guitar Tech and in today's lesson I'm going to be showing you some little tricks and techniques you can use to get a slide guitar sound even if you don't have a slide available or if you don't want to bother learning slide guitar because it is quite a difficult technique to learn uh, but in recordings you can actually get away with using some of these little tricks I'm going to show you and they will depending on where they are in the mix they, they will emulate a slide guitar sound uh, and they will fool some people they won't fool everyone obviously the only real way to get a slide guitar sound is to use a slide uh, but these will sort of get you in the ballpark and another advantage is that you won't have to retune the guitar to an open tuning because a lot of slide guitar is played in an open tuning such as open E or open G uh, and with these techniques you can just leave your guitar in standard tuning uh, and you can emulate that slide guitar effect so let's go to a close up and I'll show you some of these techniques as I said, one advantage to this technique is that we can just leave the guitar in standard tuning, which is what I've got here. So we don't need to tune to an open slide tuning such as open E or open G. The big disadvantage really is that we can only use this technique in G. G major or rather I think of it more as G mixolydian so I'm, I'm thinking around the G mixolydian scale if you don't know what I'm talking about you don't know what the mixolydian scale is go back and watch some of my earlier videos on modes or watch some other videos on YouTube but basically the mixolydian scale it's the same as the major scale but with a flat seven so in g major the seven is an f sharp we will flatten that to an f so instead of instead of we've got that's the mixolydian scale and that's the scale i'm thinking of the chords we're going to be using, we're just going to be using basic three note triads and in some cases just two notes. So we're going to be using the open strings, uh, the open second, third and fourth strings, which gives us a second inversion G major chord. And then we're going to play those same three strings at the third fret using a bar. You can use whichever finger you like. So that would be a B flat on the third fret, a C on the fifth fret. And then we're going to use an F up here on the tenth fret. And then at the 12th fret, we've got another G. We're also going to be using our D shape, not the D chord, but the D shape, which if we move that up three frets, we've got another F major here on strings one, two, and three. Same as here same notes it's a different position uh, and then slide that up to and we've got another G major same as this so those are the chord shapes we're going to be using we're also going to break some of these up so we might just use 
two strings rather than all three. So we might use strings two and three, or strings three and four, or strings one and two, or two and three. So the first basic technique is just literally sliding. So we're going to slide from fret 3 up to fret 5. So if we play the open strings first, remember to mute the high E string. While you're doing this, you don't want that ringing out. So you do need to mute that. And then we're going to play the open strings with the high E muted and also the two low strings, the E and the A muted. Then we're going to slide from the third fret up to the fifth fret. And then from that fifth fret we're going to slide back down without plucking the strings this time so and then from there we're just going to do a pull off so again we're not going to pluck the strings Again, making sure that we're muting the two low strings and the high E. So you can already hear that sounds a bit kind of like a slide guitar. So that's the first technique, and then once we've done that, we can maybe slide up from this F up to the octave G. So again, just plucking the F chord and then sliding. So with that F, you can either just Hit it once and slide, or pluck it twice. They both sound okay. We can also do that F to G here as a D shape. Sorry. You can hear I'm putting some heavy vibrato on there to give it more of a sliding thing. So that's that's one way to get like a slide effect. Now we're going to look at some mini bends. These are often called country bends and these are where we'll hold one note down steady and we'll bend one uh, we'll bend a note on the other string just a semitone that's all we're going to be bending here the semitones so the first one we can do is instead of playing this c here as a three note chord if we think of it as a two note chord on strings two and three but then we're going to move this G string down one fret. So it's like the D shape playing an E chord with the middle finger removed. Just using those two strings. And then we're just going to bend up with the index finger to that note while holding this second string at the fifth fret e steady so 
So that's another way to get a bit more authenticity. But you'll notice I'm again, after I plug that there, then I'm just doing a slide and a pull off. So that's the first bend. So we're holding with the ring finger steady and bending up just a half step with the index finger. Practice that. They do take a little bit of practice, these bends. They can be quite tricky at first, but it's worth persevering because these are very useful. You can use them in all kinds, all genres of music. So that's the first one. That would give us this C. You can also use it there for the B flat as well. And use it in other areas on the neck if you want. So the next one, very similar to this. We take our D shape again, this time the F chord. Again, remove the middle finger, but this time slide the index finger down one fret. So we've now got a free fret in between the index and ring fingers. Or if you find this difficult, you can swap the ring finger and use the pinky finger instead, whichever you find most comfortable. So we're now two, two frets apart. And again, the second string, this F on the sixth fret, we're going to hold that steady. But this third string at the fourth fret, we're going to bend up a semitone again to give us our note there. So that's giving us that C which gives us an F. And again, we can do that here for the G as well. Middle finger off, slide that down one. That gives us a G. So we've got this one. You can think of this. When, when we just, when the frets are adjacent like this, you think of this as bending to an A shape. You imagine your A major, and then C major, that has an A shape. That's what we're playing here, but, but we're using a bar instead. That's just a C chord. So when we're using these, on adjacent frets, we're bending to an A shape chord. And when we've got a fret in between, so we've got a two fret stretch, we're bending to a D shape chord. So in this case, this F that is a D shape or G shape. And then the final bend I'm going to show you, this is the most difficult one. Again, this is bending to this D shape, so F and G again. We'll use the F, and this time we're going to use the second and third strings. And I use my index on the third string and my second finger on the second string for these bends. This is difficult because now we want to hold the third string steady with the index finger whilst bending the second string down 
with the second finger. This is this is a really really difficult one to get. What I tend to do is as I'm bending that string down, I will move my index, I will slide the index finger forwards towards from the back of the fret to the front. This helps me to keep it steady. That's just how, how I find it easiest. If I try and just leave that index finger there, I tend to bend both strings. So I find it easy to slide that index finger along as I'm doing the bend. And again, we can do that for the G. So that's a really difficult one to get. But they're all worth learning, these little mini bends, because they're very, very useful. And then it's a case of mixing and matching these. get the idea uh, or, or using that bend there that's another technique we can use we can use the bend and then slide on the third and first strings imagine the F chord but take the ring finger off and I use I use my second and ring fingers rather than index and second, but you can use index and second and just so I'm sliding on the third string and then when I get there I'm playing the high E string. No, and if you want, so you can hear you're getting a very sort of pseudo slide guitar effect. Uh, and then what we can also do is put some little riffs in here and there, based around that G mixolydian scale. So, for example, so you get the idea. So, there I did a little. Uh, That's based around that G mixolydian, and I'm all I'm doing there is I'm going to the 15th fret high E string, pulling off to 13, and I'm using my pinky finger down to my second finger. And then I'm dropping that second finger onto the second string and pulling off from 13 to 12. And then using the bar on my G chord there. So I'm, I've already got the bar in place. So 
So you can do all kinds of things there. So just little licks like that, you can make your own up. Don't do that. You, you wouldn't hear that on a slide guitar. See, I can't do that then with uh, fingers three and four. I have to use those to get that then. Then that low riff there, I'm just sliding on the A string, the fifth string, from three to five. And then I'm playing the third fret on the fourth string, going to the third fret on the third string. And then you can slide. Go back to the fourth string and slide up to this G. But what I usually do is bend that. But that's quite a difficult bend with just the index finger. idea so in a recording if, if that was sort of not too forward in the mix that could sound quite convincing as a slide guitar so it's a useful technique to play around with just in case you've never got a slide on you and you want to get a slide type effect and you happen to be in the key of G remember you can only really use this technique in G, or it definitely works best in that key. Uh, so, quite a few techniques there. These little micro bends. For you to get your teeth into. And just remember to play around that. Uh, G Mixolydian scale. Learn a few licks using that scale and just throw them in in between your. there's my lesson for today i hope you found that helpful and useful if you did as ever please do remember to like comment share subscribe to the channel it helps me out if you do subscribe remember to click the little bell notification so that you're notified each time i upload a new video that's all from me today i'll be back next week with another video for you bye for now and have a good day Yeah.